Hi guys, with the settings I share with you in this video, you ensure that you get the best low light performance your camera can produce and it works with every camera, even a GoPro or your drone. So let's get started. To get good low light footage, you need to ensure that as much light as possible hits your sensor and the first step to do so is to use the lowest aperture possible. So on cameras like GoPro and most drones, you don't have aperture control, so there you can't do that. But if you have a mirrorless camera, for example, simply set the aperture to the lowest and if possible, use a lens with a low aperture. Generally, lenses with an aperture of up to f2.8 are considered good for low light. And the next step is to simply set your frame rate to either 24, 25 or 30 frames per second. Definitely not to 50, 60, 100 or 120 or even higher because that ensures that you can use lower shutter speed and that also makes sure that more light hits the sensor. So that leads us directly to step three and step three is to set your shutter speed to the lowest option possible. So for 24 frames per second, that's either 48 or 50. For 25 frames per second, that's 50 and for 30 frames per second that's 60. And by the way, how do you like the haze effect in my studio? I just got the spray here and trying it out. I really like it, it looks pretty cool, right? Okay, I will not use the haze spray again. You can really see it here on my table. It leaves this oily film over the table and like everywhere in my room now. So if you are in Thailand and you see this haze spray here, the cheaper one, don't, don't get it. So after setting up your aperture, the frame rate and the shutter speed, it's time for step three. So here you can expose via ISO. So if your image looks a bit too dark, you raise the ISO. Of course, the higher the ISO, the more noise you get. So if you're in a studio environment, it's better to simply make your lights brighter instead of raising the ISO. And also depending on the camera you have, you might have a functionality called dual ISO, which basically means that on a specific higher ISO level, you get better noise performance or less noise noise as you would get with lower ISO levels. For example, on the Fujifilm X-T4 here, it has a dual ISO at 2000. So when I set the ISO to 2000, I get better noise performance as I would get at ISO 1600. So be aware of that. Just check it on Google if your camera has a dual ISO or not. And then you can also change the picture profiling camera for better low light performance, but that depends a bit. If you are in a very dark setting, it's generally better to use a contrasty picture profile to hide the noise directly in camera. But if you're in a bit brighter setting still, then it's also okay to use either a log or generally a flat color profile because that makes your shadows a bit brighter so you can see the noise directly straight out of camera. But after color grading it later, when you add contrast and you darken the image a little bit, the noise disappears in the shadows. So when your setting is a bit brighter, it's totally fine to use flat color profiles as well. And that's it already. I hope it was helpful. And that's the first part of Videography Shorts, a new series of videos that I want to publish here on my YouTube channel to give you weekly quick tips that make your videography better. So if you want to see more of that, then hit the subscribe and the bell notifications button and I see you in the next one. Running some calories. Yeah, the carpet needs a bit deeper cleaning. Mm -hmm.